Let's have a check on the teams. That's the Scottish lineup. Just the one change. Aitken coming in for Weir from the side, which uh, played and beat Wales by one goal to nil. Five of their lineup. For them, it's a new experience. And England fielding the strongest side available to them with four players in midfield. David Watson has come up on the far side and aimed for him. Oh, that's not a good header by Jordan. He was lucky that fell to a colleague. Maybe a schoolboy error heading right back across the face of his own goal. McDermott. Front line of three for England. Johnson on the right. Koppel in the middle. Mariner far side coming in. Nodded back for Brooking and Brooking. Only the second goal of his England career. Brooking puts England in front in the eighth minute, really before Alan Ruff has had any feel of the ball at all. But the secret of that was the way that Mariner got away on the far side. A long diagonal cross. Nobody picked up Mariner. But he made quite a long distance, came down to Brooking, who kept it down and passed Ruff's legs. Really was a long cross. Well, the Scots thought Mariner was offside. A distance on the throw. Wilkins he found. Now cut out by Gemmick. Yes, they've got a 2 1 advantage. Cherry having to come across to Dalgleish. Jordan is in the middle. And well picked up. Kenny Dalglish kept the foot up against his club colleague. But Dalglish actually pushed it. He lost control there with his left foot. And as he came through, he lost it, pushed it too far again. Beautifully picked up, but the foot was there trying to get it, and it caught Ray Clements. McLeish. McGrain. Watson across. Marked contrast in physique, but Gemmel has won the corner. Watson lost it as he stretched for it. Fish making the early run. Marked by two. Aitken couldn't get there, and is the referee going to give a penalty? It was a very, very wild challenge by Mariner. And uh, Aitken gets to his feet not too happy. But a, really a forwards challenge in his own area. Look at that. And here's McDermott. Johnson to the right. Mariner in the inside left position. Oh, Johnson's got a gap for his left. Just didn't run for him, but there was a definite gap to the left. Jordan. And he's round Phil Thompson and well, Gemmel near post. And it was down Felicia's shot. Good piece of play by Joe Jordan. Johnson. Mariner. Koppel. I think that one might well have been labelled. Certainly would have caused Ruff to move a bit sharply. And returning to find Koppel wide and the ball coming off Monroe. For the corner. Looking again. Cherry again in the six yard box. And Cherry didn't, and it was off the line by Munro. Headed the wrong way by Jordan. Mariner. Miller doing the battling. McGrain with the clearance. A double header by England then was saved on the line by Munro. Brooking, oh, look at dummy. But McDermott not able to keep it in, according to the linesman. Bit of pressure here from the Scots. Still three forward. But the diagonal crosses, the sort of crosses that England were putting in against Northern Ireland. McGrain. And Brooking. I wonder if Brian Clough is watching this. And I certainly can't deny his industry, his covering in defence. 
is Douglas. That's the first time he's got away. And setting up the chance of, for himself. Strachan, Wilkins, Miller. Gemmel. This could be promising for the Scots. Douglas. Trying to pick somebody out. It's Jordan! And he waited then to Douglas. And then saw the run early by Gemmel. Look for the late run on the top of your picture from Jordan. Here he comes. And that indeed the last action of the first half. Sixteen just disappearing into the tunnel. Runs for Munro. Aitken outside him. Gemmel down the middle. So is Dalglish here, number seven. That's a fine back header to Jordan. But his first touch took it quite the wrong way. Couple away. And determinedly going through. Here's Johnson. Now on far side. Wilkins coming to the middle if it's pulled back. And Johnson has done it all well. Mariner came off the outside of the square post. Here's Gemmel. Danny McGray, Strachan making the run left to right. Here he is on the wide side of the defence. And taking on Sansom, stretched by Thompson. Douglas let it run, and it didn't run too kindly. Sure he made the right decision initially because the ball running gave him a gap. And Strachan made a good run out to the right and beat Sansom. Clements having to come, he got the fist. Douglas. Flicked by Jordan. Strachan, not a particularly good clearance. Douglas making the run. Finding more space coming from deeper positions, and that's awkward and was very, very well claimed by Ray Clements. As Gray came from his right. But Douglas, finding much more space, came off the fullback. And the goalkeeper had to stretch and took it away from Gray's feet. Thompson having to stretch. Koffel. Johnson and Burley. Handball by Johnson. Well, no whistle has gone. Brooking if he can pull it back. Two other England players there. Here's Brooking. McDermott to the right. Koffel to the left. Koffel again after the goalkeeper lost it. And another disaster for Scotland. Alan Ruff, with obvious annoyance, gets to his feet. And as last year, Steve Koppel making him pay, although last year he felt he was fouled. That was, I would have thought, just a touch of the forearms from Johnson. But it was close, and the linesman had a good enough view. And Johnson going in, found Brooking. There were two England players to the right. Came the other way for Koppel. The goalkeeper lost it, and Koppel made him pay for it. from the whistle and Jock Steen goes off a disappointed man and indeed a certain amount of booing from around Hampden Park England with the victory by two goals to nothing Trevor Brooking the first goal in the eighth minute and the second goal coming from Steve Koppel in the 76th scoring for the second consecutive match between these two countries on this ground